<laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to a- another episode of From the District with State Senator Suzanne Weber. We have not done one of these in a little while. Senator, how are you? I am just fine. Busy as can be. I, I didn't think I could be any busier, but I am. With the start of the session, um, meeting with constituents, meeting with groups like the small colleges and, and others, um, it's just go, go, go. It has been. We've got 35 days to get it all done, um, and um, hopefully we do. Yeah, I, it is. Um, and I just want to warn everybody, short session is... 35 days, as, as Senator said. It is insane. Uh, the, the the staff <laughs> and the <laughs> members, like, we're just going nuts. So please bear with us. If you, if you get any, so this is a good time to say, if you've got something that you want to talk to the Senator about that does not have to do with legislation that is before the legislature over the next 35 days, it's a great time to write that down and save it for later. <laughs> Because uh, it, it just, um, it, it's not going to get the attention that it deserves. Um, it really well, it, is a good time to... Not, because we have, we have to do so much fact-finding on what's coming to our committees. And we have to listen to so much testimony. And um, then there is the lobby that comes in and, and weighs in also. And so um, our days, you know... Uh, I'll get to the Capitol. Um, I've got several days of the week that I have to be there at 730 in the morning. And I go all day long and then realize about two o'clock in the afternoon that I forgot to eat somewhere along the along the way. And then I leave there at six o'clock or later at night. And every day of the week, there is a, a reception or a get together um, or a, a group that meets afterwards uh, that you're invited to and you're expected to attend. And uh, unfortunately, in this past week, I've missed everyone. Yeah, and that's always a bummer because those are always the fun things. Yeah. Um, they're usually events put on by professional associations, uh, groups, uh, trade groups, things like that. And it's, uh, it's always fun to go and, and hear what those groups are up to and and because a lot of, I mean, you have usually constituents who are there who are members of a uh, farm bureau or the cattlemen or, 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 or loggers or the great yeah. to go to those events. And it's just a real bummer when you can't do it, but gosh, it's just, it's just hard to, it's hard to get anywhere. Yes. So I, all that to say that if you do have some uh, matters that, that can wait, and certainly if they can't wait, please do reach out. But if they can wait until after the session, which is a beginning of March, is will be when we're at the end, uh, please do. I, otherwise, I'm afraid that your concern will get just shuffled over with just the sheer amount of things and emails and phone calls and messages that are coming through. Uh, so, uh, but when it comes to actually uh, stuff that we have to do, the short session and the long session, you really can have as many bills as you want, as long as you file yeah. them by a certain day, right? Uh, there's a there's one member in particular that we love, and we love him dearly. We love him dearly. And uh, that he always has 80, 90, 100 bills. And, um, uh, but in the short session, that just isn't the way it is. Nope. Uh, you get two. You get two bills. And um, let's and then talk. I might also add that there, the committees are able to push bills forward also. Right. That the committee thinks is important. Which I think you find. I hadn't I hadn't gone through and actually counted, but I bet there's more committee bill, committee bills than there are, there are member bills. I, I bet think so. Um, so the committees get together, and they say, "Hey, we want to make this a priority for the short session." They do this for the long session too. Um, I've always said, if you really wanted to limit things, give all the members three bills and ban the committees and ban the agencies and the governor <laughs> yep. from in introducing bills. Although I will say the governor right. only has one bill this year. He so has only true. one bill. So that's, that's I appreciate that. for. And I, I think it's going to be um, a heavy lift, um, mm -hmm. but it's uh, it's her bill, it's her focus, and she's working very hard on it. So that what bill is is laser focused on housing and yes. particularly increasing housing production. 
Um, right, and that's that is a follow up from, the, you know, the bills that she wa was an advocate for in her first in the long session. Right. But it's right. expanded and it's intensified. Right. That bill was quite interesting because her party actually killed it. Right. Uh, most of the Republicans were on board with her bill, uh, but she couldn't get enough of the Democrats on board. And that was mostly yes. because uh, there were some in concerns by the environmental uh, environmentalist community, uh, particularly a thousand friends of Oregon uh, that shut that got that got enough Democrats on their side to shut it down. And that yes. uh, I was. I was amazed by it. Governors, well, first of all, when a bill goes to the floor, it almost always passes. For a governor's priority bill to go to the floor and not pass, that is... That was a very tense time, let me yes. tell you. And yeah. the last votes, as they were called and waited for, um, it, it, uh, it took a long time to get the ballots counted or you know people to vote. Because, you know, Another thing is that when you're in the Senate, you have a voice vote. In your house, you just push a button, yes or no. Right. But it's not that way in the Senate. Each person has to respond. And so it was, you know, it was really interesting. And you've heard me say how the governor marched down the hall of the fourth floor after yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So she did. Uh, so so this bill reworked a little bit. Uh, it'll be really interesting to see uh, how those same interests respond because I think a lot of those concerns that were in that first bill are still in this bill. So yes. um, it'll be interesting to see how they respond. Um, it is a very large bill. So there's. I know that we're all still going through it. So I don't want to say good bill, well, bad. Bill, we're, but, we're going through it, and we've been requested to bring um, concepts and um, projects that are ready to go to be included in that bill. But what's going to come out of it, I'm not sure. Because there's one thing that's really not being addressed with the strength that it needs to be addressed, and that is infrastructure, water and sewer. Right. Especially in rural areas. We haven't had the money to be able to provide the water and sewer. Uh, it, it's extremely expensive for small towns with limited revenue to be able to work on these kinds of projects. Right. I would say particularly for those folks who, are, who might be listening who are in the metropolitan area, uh, when there's a UGB expansion, uh, quite often a developer will put in that infrastructure because yes. they're going to go build five, six, seven hundred houses. So that's well, just, that pencils out. Yeah, but that it, cost will be absorbed into the, right more easily, yes. But when you're building 20 or 30 or 40 or even, you know, 60 or 70 houses, and that's all you can do, and you're trying to make it work for us, uh, and you've got a limited amount of space because that's what we have in yes. rural Northwest Oregon. You can't, it doesn't pencil. It doesn't. So uh, it doesn't. that's something that I know that you have been talking about inserting in some of these bills is not just money for the housing itself, but money for infrastructure development. And uh, I guess we'll see how right. that goes. But. Because we have areas that can, right now have moratoriums on building. And, and it's because they can't get the sewer or the water to it. Right. Or they have um, they have a moratorium on new water meters because they don't have the capacity right. in the system that they have. And they need to expand the system, but they can't afford to expand the system. So it's a terrible situation. And I, I'm, I'm glad that we've been talking about that in, in, in uh, adding this to whether it's the governor's bill or in other places. Right. Um, so here's here's hope and we're able to get that done. So housing, big big issue that has been. Um, I think you're going to see you're going to see a lot of that. There's another issue that there's really yeah. two issues I think have that have been really the focus of of the the uh, lead up to this session. It will be the focus of the session, and the second one is Measure One Ten, which yes. was the ballot measure here not too long ago that decriminalized pretty much all drugs and um right and it it did not come from 
uh, Oregon. That was not Oregon's plan. It was paid for by money from the East Coast. Right. And, and Oregon really didn't know the impact that that was going to have because we were sold a bill of goods. And I, I didn't vote for it. I'll tell you that right now. This is one, t one thing I will tell you. I did not vote for it. But they were sold on the idea of uh, rehabilitation, of uh, help for addiction, of beds being provided so that people could be um, helped through the, these tough times. And the beds didn't exist that could have helped all of the people. And then with the decriminalization, um, it made things extremely difficult, especially for our law enforcement people. Right. Uh, and so the, the effects of 110 were compounded daily and monthly in a negative way right so we've got two sets of plans uh or yep. two plans that are being considered the uh, the majority party the democrats have a plan that would essentially recriminalize um uh, drug use and would make it a class c misdemeanor which is the lowest level of misdemeanor lowest uh, is level. punishable is punishable by jail time um, so that is a positive. Yep. The Republicans have a, have a partner, uh, idea that would actually raise it to class a misdemeanor, which is the highest level of misdemeanor and it would make it so it would also be possible for jail time, but a substantial amount more. Um, yeah, I'm sure this is all going to get debated out. Oh, yeah. It, it already is beginning. Um, the, the hearing that was last week to kick it off had standing room only. And I think all um, committees coming forward uh, related to that will also be um, standing room only. And we are also seeing that there are um, groups that are coming forward and spending money, especially on ads, to tell the Oregon people, um, we don't want to we don't want to put the old ways back in. We have to work at, you know, continuing rehabilitation and not um, pu uh, punishing or um, recognizing uh, the the effects of of the drugs. To just make tweaks rather than changes, and and I think that. In my looking at it, we need to make some broad changes because a slap on the wrist is not going to really affect anything that's happening right now. Well, which is what a uh, uh, mis uh, class misdemeanor C would do. Well, and I think this is uh, we were talking a little bit beforehand, and right now it's treated like a traffic violation, and even less than a traffic violation because less. people aren't even prosecuting. Less. I yeah. mean, if you, you don't show up for a traffic court, you and you don't pay your fine, you are going to. There's going to be consequences to that. There's not even con the cops aren't even writing tickets because it's not even worth their time. Right. right. It's I not. mean, I think it would, and whether it's Class A or Class C, I would prefer Class A as well. I think we treat this like a DUI. You know, you get a DUI, okay. and you get two choices. You can go into diversion in which you need you which are you will go to treatment there is no you don't show up you will go to treatment and if you don't go to treatment you are going to jail those are your two options and then if you do it again well then you're just going to go to jail we yeah. treat alcohol much worse than we do fentanyl which is i mean it, right we do we we have the legislature has to fix this because I think Oregonians are saying to you to you as legislators, fix this or we will fix this for you, and it will be a total repeal. You know, you have folks like uh, Christine Drazen who is a the ran for yeah. governor, folks like Betsy Johnson who is your your predecessor. Right. Uh, they're ready, ready and willing to just. They're blow ready. Up. They're ready to go to work on totally getting rid of this. And I think. I think, and I think, I think Oregonians are so sick of this. Yes. And you I know, don't. Every, everywhere you go, you see someone sitting in a corner shooting up or bobbing their head or, you yep. know, in, in a compromising position. Right. Uh, 
that you know is related to drug abuse, drug use. Well, well I, th I think it's a, it's very, uh, it's heartening to me that at least uh, the legislature realizes this is a major problem and has to get fixed because this was one of the frustrations I think you and the, the, the Republicans had last session is that the Democrats didn't seem to want to do this. They didn't want to do anything. They wanted to leave it alone. And it seemed that the Oregon, <laughs> that maybe they, they did some polling afterwards and realized if they didn't do anything, it was going to get Oregonians would Oregonians would. So we'll I'm glad yeah. to see that there's at least conversations happening. And I know certainly it would much, we'd much rather have it, uh, the, the, the stronger punishments, but yes. We'll and you know, our, you know, you would, I have heard that this is going to put a real strain if this goes through with a class misdemeanor A on our law enforcement and our jails. I've had meetings with our sheriff and they're not saying that. They're saying, please make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. I've in my conversations in law enforcement. Um, they want to be, they want the stronger penalties. And now that's just anecdotal. It'd be interesting to hear when we start having these actual hearings, what the law enforcement associations, the, or the sheriff's association, uh, the, the chiefs of police association, let's hear what they have to say. And we got to really, really yeah. take the heart. Right. Um, I had a meeting with Tilma County Sheriff the week before, uh, week before last. And, and he pointed out, how extremely important it is to deal with this in a more more proactive way to right. not just let this slip away to make a change to make a difference All right well you have you have your two bills so let's just uh, yes, give, let's give a couple uh just give a high level discussion of what these two bills are well the first one is a senate joint resolution and what it's going to do is uh, dedicate a portion of Highway 101 to a young man who was uh, killed while in the service, uh, Kenny uh, Lyston. Um, he, he's from this uh, district, and he served at uh, Camp Rylea, and uh, losing him uh, was tragic. And um, this is a good way to uh, recognize him uh, and his family for his giving the ultimate sacrifice. And this does, maybe someone says, well, you only need two bills, why do this? This does require legislative action. You yes, have, it does. Uh, I believe it's a Senate concurrent resolution 213. Uh, yes. It requires this resolution to be able to honor this, this, uh, this specialist um, by naming part of the highway after him. I believe he went, he was part of Camp Rylea. Yes. Um, he uh, came so from Columbia and, County. And yep. um, and um, there are organizations that have already um, volunteered to uh, put the signs up to honor him along the highway because, you know, you see those signs along the highway also. Um, and so uh, that gives him additional recognition. Right. And I well, think it's important. Right. And his right. his family and compatriots will be invited to uh, the Senate at the time that uh, he is acknowledged and given this honor. So you know they'll be able to celebrate his uh, being recognized. Yeah, excellent. Uh, and then you have Senate Bill fifteen fifty six, and this is going to sound a little familiar because we did yeah. something like this uh, just last year. Yes, Highway thirty. Uh, last year, I did have a Highway 30 study bill, but it didn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. But now we are having increasingly uh, more dramatic issues on Highway 30 that people are beginning to see. We need um, to study this highway um, and give it the same respect and acknowledgement as we have Highway 6. We're still looking for money high for Highway 6, and we will continue to do that. But we also need to know um, all of the data that goes with Highway um, 30. We had a landslide there last week that closed the highway. We have an, an, uh, a huge number of tourists that come to the coast for fishing that use that um, road. It needs to be in good repair for that. We have several um, manufacturing and business interests along that highway 
that need their employees to get to work. And if the highway is closed because of either accidents or um, geological um, events, um, we need to be able to have those things taken care of. And the other thing is we have some really good, uh, good, great big um, uh, plans for um, housing and for additional industry in that um, piece of stretch of highway. And that is going to impact our highway um, to a great degree, especially with construction workers. And so we need to make sure that those construction um, projects are going to be completed um, safely. We're going to be able to get materials to those sites. And uh, the people that work there are going to be able to um, travel safely. And that goes back to the conversation that we had, is that this, this is not just about building houses. It's making sure that our roads are, are safe. It's making sure the roads are in, making sure that everything around housing is is ready to go so that the housing yep. can be built and and um the we we did this a couple of years ago when you were in the house with highway six highway six uh, we all know those of us in tillamook county know what highway how what the problems around highway six are but there were so many of them that we needed to actually put that information in one place so that we can prioritize and then go look for funding. We have that information now and we can go ahead as soon as as soon as we um, go into the budgeting session next year, we can start asking for these projects to be budgeted right. for repairs. Right. We've got the same problem in Highway 30. We need to do the same thing with Highway 30. So uh, yeah. it was very successful. Those are main arteries to yeah. our survival. Right, right. Um, we, I think about the, the Highway 6 bill was very successful. Um, it, we have gotten the information that we need and now we can start prioritize, uh, right. prioritizing those projects to get them funded and we'll be able to do the same thing with Highway 30 when that information is collected. So right. um, I know Senate Bill 1556, the, the Highway 30 bill is in the committee, uh, the Joint Committee for Transportation, and it will have a bill, a, uh, a hearing this Tuesday, the 13th. Right. Um, five so o'clock. Five o'clock. So you can testify, folks, and you can testify on any of these bills uh, two ways. Well, three ways. Three ways. One, one, you can come down to Salem and, and, and sign up and testify in person. You are right. always welcome to do that. It is the people's house. You can be there um, and you can and uh, take your time to do that. However, folks, I know that people have jobs and they have things to do and they can't necessarily do that every single time. You can go to OLIS, or the Oregon Legislative Information System, and you can get there by going to OregonLegislature.gov and then finding the, the right. old button and clicking that. Uh, and uh, additionally, there will be helps in our newsletter to mm -hmm. be able to navigate OLIS, to be able to find this information. Right. Uh, our our uh, newsletter will be going out real soon and that information will be there. Right, and if you if you have any problems, just reach out. We're happy to help you. Yes. Um, but you can you can uh, test uh, either virtually via um, Microsoft Teams, or you can testify over the phone. You can uh, do it that way. Or if you just don't want to, if you would prefer just to do it in writing, you can submit your testimony in writing too. That does get read. So um, there's no reason why you can't make your uh, your opinion known, whether in person, whether virtually, or whether in in, in written mm -hmm. form. Yeah. You can also go and watch these hearings. You can um, watch them right. live, or you can watch recordings of it. Um, you don't have to watch every single um, hearing, but uh, what we will try to do is uh, bring some bills every, every week, because we're going to do these weekly uh, yeah. during the session, point out some bills you might be interested in, uh, tell you what committee they are in, uh, and tell you how to uh, submit testimony or sign up to testify. So, uh, we'll start with fifteen fifty six Senate Bill fifteen fifty six in the Joint Committee on Transportation. Uh, that uh, that hearing is at five o'clock on the thirteenth. Yes, For it is. You folks who are going to submit in writing, you have until five o'clock on the fourteenth. Uh, yes, and and 
you know, this is not a long hearing. I mean, you your testimony does not have to be long. But usually what they ask you for is about two minutes. Yeah. So be succinct. Get your ideas in there. Um, don't hem and haw, and yeah. they'll listen to you. They prefer that it not be long. And, you, you know, they, these legislators have a lot coming at them. So if you can make your point short and sweet and why you think it should pass or why you think it shouldn't pass, yes. uh, please do that. So uh, look for more information in the newsletter about how to testify or submit testimony um, or reach out to us. There is one more thing that has been a real challenge that I do want us to talk about. Um, and that comes from Tillamook County, your home. And that's been the difficulty of the closing of the dialysis center okay. in Tillamook. Uh, talk a little bit about that and what you've been doing. Well, it was announced at the beginning of the month that our dialysis system, um, would, um, that serves 12 people, uh, would be closing. It's um, operated by a company called U.S. Renal Care. And... Um, Basically, the um, reimbursement from Medic Medicare, especially, is not covering the um, cost of providing this. And uh, I thought it was very um, interesting that they chose to do this at a time when our weather uh, conditions are probably the worst. But they are withdrawing. They they are not a part of the hospital. They um, rent space from the hospital and bring their own equipment in. So I have uh, reached out to them. I reached out to the hospital um, to, to make sure that if they are in fact going to leave, they have a lease at the hospital that goes till the end of April. And they have assured me that they would make sure that everyone is getting secure treatment um, before they leave so that uh, no one will be um, left without the care that they need. Now, I'm sure you know about dialysis, um, and I know you know it takes uh, a long time, and it has to be done um, frequently, maybe three times a week, and it takes a lot of hours to be able to sit, um, and it's very tiring for people. Um, but it is what is sustaining them and keeping them alive. And um, it, it's something that's very necessary. So the hospital is continuing to work to find a replacement, but it's very difficult. And uh, But they're not giving up. They are continuing to work to see if we can, in fact, bring this back within the community. Uh, because it is, you know, the equipment would be, be there, the the um, location would be there. It would be a, a secure place for people. But in the meantime, until something can be done, if something can be done, if something can be done, um, U.S. Renal Care has and is making arrangements for people to get their dialysis in other places. You know, we've got we've got basically three options. We have um, Seaside in the Astoria area. That's one. Uh, we have going south to Lincoln City. Um, their facility is full at this time, and they're not taking any more. They have a waiting list. And then uh, there is the Forest Grove and the Hillsboro area. And um, they're, they are arranging for transportation also for people to um, go to these places and, and get back safely, which um, I think I appreciate that. But um, still, um, it is my hope that we will be able to uh, get this service back within our community to make sure that people don't have to travel as far in order to get medical uh, treatments. And so um, I'm going to continue to work on this. I have uh, weekly meetings um, set up with the U.S. Renal Care people to make sure that we are doing the best for the people that are here. Right. You know, it's a very difficult thing to think about uh, and it's a very unfortunately crass thing to think about is that uh, they are a business and 12 exactly. patients it's very difficult to sustain such an expensive business with 12 patients so i certainly understand that um hopefully we can find a way to bring something back to this community because um the terrain 
as we all know, during the winter to go over, uh, even getting up to Seaside or getting down to Lincoln City um, three times a week. Yes. That's tough. But I uh, certainly appreciate yeah, it's, it's work the, doing that. It's the travel time. It's the time they have to be there. It's the time to get home. It's yeah. the inter an additional interruption um, in their in the quality of their lives. Well, Senator, I'm going to try to limit these to as to like 30 minutes at most because number one, you have a great deal of work to do. Number two, we're going to do these weekly, so uh, there's they're not going to be monthly updates. They're going to be weekly updates, so they're happening more often. So, is there anything else, Senator, that you'd like to include for the week? Um, no, um, it is Charity Drive Week in Tillamook. Oh Monday. yes, and there's a there is a lot of. Uh, um, charity um, events all up and down the coast. And I just want to encourage you to take part in that because it's they're doing good work. You should and not have to eat. If you, you live in Kilmore County, eat. you should not have to eat for 10 days. Yeah, you I'm should. sorry, you should not have to cook for 10 days. Cook. You should eat. You should not have to cook for 10 days because yeah. there is at least two or three uh, meal options every day. Right. And today I got to go to high tea. Ah. It was wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Well, excellent. Well, thank you, Senator. Uh, we'll be touching base very soon, as we always do. And uh, thank you very much, everyone. And we'll see you next week. Thank you, Adam. I appreciate it. You bet.